One thing that is for sure in short supply today is the very subject that we're going to be thinking about today, and that is the question or the issue of meekness. The third beatitude says, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. And we know that uh, that view would be regarded as nonsense today, for it's usually the powerful that think they inherit the earth. And we've just listened to politicians worldwide boasting and speaking with a, a very arrogant, narcissistic approach of how they intend to make what they want happen. And it's really sad to listen to that. But when you come to the Bible, you discover something very, very different. And we need to ask ourselves the question, which is crucial, just what is meek, meekness? And I think that maybe Psalm 37 would be a very good help to us, which connects the meek and the unmeek, or the opposite of meekness, which we'll see in a minute. Let me read you from Psalm 37, because that's where you come across these words in verse 11, but the meek shall inherit the land. Psalm 37 is a wonderful psalm. I'm not going to read it all, but I would encourage you just to read it all slowly. It says, Do not fret because of evildoers, and do not be envious of wrongdoers, for they shall soon fade like the grass and wither like the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and befriend faithfulness. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Now, don't you notice there's a kind of a yes and no, a this and that in it. It talks about the wrongdoer, but then it talks about those who trust in the Lord and befriend faithfulness. It will continue to use this kind of going from one to the other. For example, refrain from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret yourself. It tends only to evil. For the evildoers shall be cut off. That's on the one hand. But on the other hand, those who wait for the Lord shall inherit the land. You see, the one way or the other way. And the Bible, especially the Hebrew thought, is often doing that on this hand and on that hand. James talks about, that is James the, James the Apostle, he talks about receiving the word with meekness, a spirit of meekness, this characteristic. And it's also included in the dress code. Colossians 3.12 says, Put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, meekness, kindness, humility, and patience. And I think that helps to narrow it down a little bit. Asking the question, what is meekness? The dictionary says submission, long-suffering, self-effacing. But I think the Bible definition is maybe better. The Bible definition is maybe, we find it as we understand what the word in Greek means, which is protes or protes. A lack of pride to the point of lack of self-concern. A decided strength of disciplined calmness, compassion, kindness towards subordinates. We know that in Numbers, Moses is called, Numbers 12 verse 3, he is called the meekest of all men. And there, if you want to do a person study or a, a life study of meekness, Moses is a very good example. He is willing to endure with the, the difficult, the burden of others complaining. Now he bears with them, but he's not passive. He's praying, he's pleading, he's active in that sense. He's not being weak or fearful or timid, but he shows great strength under control. It's all of those good qualities of strength without the bad that goes with it. And that's why here in Psalm 37, it really helps us to see that, doesn't it? Commit your way, verse 5, to the Lord. Trust in him. He will bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently before him. Don't fret yourself over the one who prospers in his way, over the man who carries out evil devices. In just a little while, the wicked will be no more. Though you look carefully at his place, he will not be there. But... The meek shall inherit the land and delight themselves in abundant peace. Reading through Psalm 37 helps you to see the contrast between the meek and those who are proud and arrogant. And we see evidence of these types every day. Those who think they achieve their goal by force, plot, scheming, bluster, loudness, 
I mean, that's what we hear if we listen to media so often. People boasting and shouting. That's not the way of the Christian. Another question to ask is, does this weakness mean, meekness mean weakness? Do they go together? Because some people might think that to be meek is just to be sort of mealy-mouthed and weak. No, it's not, absolutely. It is strength in the words and actions of grace. Does it mean we're never angry? No. Look at Moses who casts the tablets that he received on Mount Sinai and before the people and the people and they shatter. Or when Jesus return turns over the money changers' tables in the temple. They're angry. But it's very controlled anger. This surface calm acceptance and gracious resistance is, of course, the result of something deeply working in our soul. When I was thinking of this, I was reminded of one day that Joan and I went to Iceland. Yes, one day, a day trip. We flew from Belfast early in the morning and we arrived in Iceland. And on the way into Reykjavik, uh, the, the bus stopped at the Blue Lagoon. The Blue Lagoon is a famous place. The water is beautiful blue and the steam is rising off it. It's a beautiful temperature and we get out in the freezing cold. I think it was April and it was early morning. It would have been very sharp. We put on our swimming gear and jumped into this blue lagoon. Wow, such a beautiful, marvelous experience just to be in the middle of all of this. It just was, it was unreal, actually. And it's a day that we remember all our lives. A great day. But later in the afternoon, then we were taken on a little trip out around part of the island. And we came to this geyser where the, the guide threw a bucket of cold water down the hole. In a minute or two, there was the rumbling and the gurgling, and then this great big whoosh of steam came up. It was interesting because there was the same heat in both cases, but it did something different. For the Blue Lagoon, whatever the process was, it allowed the water to come up in the most blessed way, but in the geyser, in the most dangerous way. And I couldn't help but thinking, that's a good illustration of meekness. The meek spirit has got this deep, down in the strata of their soul, this deep faith in a Lord who is sovereign. They know that he is in control. That's why this Psalm 13 talks about committing your way and trusting the Lord and resting in the Lord. And, and so, you know, we know as believers, we know that the Lord is in control. We don't have to become full of bluster and do deceitful things and shout and get on. We don't need to do that. We can commit our way to him. We can be still, as it says in that verse, be still in verse 7 and wait patiently. What we know to be true shapes what we believe and that in turn determines our behaviour. If you know your times are in God's hands, you don't have to stoop to behaviour that's lacking grace. And if you're his child, if you've come to the peaceful assurance through the first two Beatitudes, you know, being poor in spirit, and then mourning your sin, leading to comfort of assurance, you can then be the person who will be meek. So once you've become convinced of the right path, we rest in, and resting in the Lord, you proceed calmly. You don't need to employ any spirit but the spirit of grace in your life. You don't need to use force. You can lead as a servant leader. For Jesus our Lord is the perfect meek example with such power and command at his hands he behaves before the very worst of evil and proud, arrogant people as he is crucified with such meekness and grace. And this is the quality of life that is normative for you and I when we live in union with Jesus. And as the Holy Spirit is active in our hearts, meekness is the fruit of the Holy Spirit that will be produced. It's one of the beautiful flowers of the stem of love. Go read 1 Corinthians 13. In every age, every day, we are called to demonstrate his meekness. And under new, greater pressures in the culture we live in, surely there's no greater thing. The meek will learn to serve humbly, to listen carefully, to learn from other wise, mature believers, and to speak when they have thought prayerfully. The meek means we will conquer, yes, as we use all our powers to serve for the glory of God and for the good of others, and that's how we inherit the earth.